Hello everyone. So, today it's another Doctor Who story review. So, today I'm going to be reviewing the very second story in Doctor Who. I can get the disc out of here. It's called The Daleks. Again, not sure if you can see that. I'm just going to move the disc around. Okay. Okay, so. Moving on to uh, plot detail. So, we start off with uh, where the last episode left off with the radiation reaching to the danger zone and how the four time travelers do not know this. They go outside to explore. Soon the doctor informs everyone that they're definitely not on Earth. And, they, and the doctor really wants to explore what appears to be an abandoned city down in a, in a valley. But everyone else is deciding, this is an earth, we want, home, or we want the 20th century, the, our home, so let's go. So then the doctor is forced to go back to the TARDIS. He pretends to take off, and then pretend, but then pretends that the fluid link has gone wrong and has run out of mercury. Really, it's completely fine, and it's full of mercury. He's just trying to trick them so that they can go down into the forest and to the city to look for mercury, but really the doctor just wants to explore there to take notes, and then once they're done, the doctor can inform them, food link's fine, I found mercury, or whatever. So, they're forced to go down there, falling for the doctor's trick, and then they decide to split up to look for mercury. And they decide they'll meet back in about 10 minutes. The Doctor, Susan, and Ian all come back and decide to wait for Barbara's return. Though unbeknown to them and Barbara, wherever Barbara is going, the doors are closing behind her to prevent her from turning back if she chooses to. After quite a while of waiting, Ian, the Doctor, and Susan decide that it's best to go look for Barbara. Meanwhile, Barbara finds her trapped with all find her trapped in a small room with all four doors on all sides closed. She, she's nervous and doesn't know where she's supposed to go when all of a sudden one of the doors actually opens for her. She, she walks through that door but just finds a simply dead end. When she turns around to go back into the small spot she, all that the viewers can see is well you'll see I guess simply decides to just inform me and then Susan that the fluid link is fine and, and was never wrong with in the first place. And that he tricked him, expecting it to just go casually and they'll continue looking for Barbara. But Ian and Susan end up getting really angry at the doctor and the doctor just tries to leave but then they all of a sudden come face to face with these creatures who for now imagine them as an upside down garbage can with a plunger in front of them. No, no, seriously, stop laughing. These guys are deadly. The doctor and uh, the Daleks tell the doctor and Susan and Ian to follow them. The doctor and Susan obey, but Ian tries to get away, and the Daleks paralyze his legs. Look at you, still sitting there, still laughing, still thinking that this is all a big joke. Fine, laugh all you want. Continuing on the story, the Daleks bring them to where uh, Barbara's being captured. And, um, and, uh, they find out that they're starting to get poisoned with the radiation. And they realize that they might as well all die. The doctor decides to try and speak with the Daleks to see why they're being held captured. And it turns out that the Daleks think that they're some foul people. They call them mutations, and they were at war with, with the Thals. And the Thals look exactly like people. And... 
Even though the docs killed a lot of the mutations, there's still some out there in the forest. They decide uh, that one. Uh, they de they realize that there was a packet of what appears to be drugs that could be cured for the radiation by the TARDIS, and and one of them could go get it. But just one of them. The Daleks said only one of them. The doctor was pretty badly hit with radiation and fell asleep every like five seconds. Uh, so he wasn't going. Barbara was also badly hit and couldn't stand up without the room spinning around. Ian was absolutely fine, but his legs were still slightly paralyzed and and only some of the feeling was, has returned so far. That left Susan the only one left. So she ran all the way to the forest and made it back to the TARDIS. When she picked up the packet of drugs, she remembered what Ian said. Don't stop for anything. Straight there. Straight back. An hour might make all the difference. her journey back to her friends when she meets someone, a Thal. The Thal turns out to be very nice people and not mutations like the Daleks said. When the Thal noticed that Susan was cold, he handed her, her cloak, his cloak. And, and then, he, when he realized that Susan was taking the drugs back to the Dalek city, he knew that the Daleks would take it from her, so he gave her an extra supply. One of them, she would let the Daleks see, and the other one she would hide as best as she could. On, uh, when she made it back, the Daleks actually noticed both of her drugs. Uh, however, they, gi they give them back to her. Susan then talks to the Doctor and Ian and Barbara about how the Thals are looking for peace and food. The Daleks have security cameras in their jail cell, and they can hear every single thing that they're saying. They, they decide that they'll have Susan write a letter to the Thals, claiming that the Daleks are ready to give them food. But they're going to wait until a couple of days. One asks why, the Daleks replies, because after eating lots of food and drinking water and having lots of sleep, They'll have a little slight tension of false security from the Dalek. And so, Susan, the Doctor, Barbara, and Ian set up a trick so that they can rip out the security camera out of the room with, with, without the Dalek knowing it was on purpose and makes them think it was an accident. Long story. You can watch the story if you want to more clear thing of what happened. Susan writes the letter and the Daleks decide to send it to the Thals. And then Barbara has an idea on how they can escape from the jail cell. She, be she begins to make mud. And when the Dalek returns to give them more food and water, when he exits, he gets a little twist. <laughs>
after that is a whole episode of Doctor Who that the story would have gone well without it because it's simply them just continuing to fight their way to the Dalek city. But just so that you don't get confused on what the cliffhanger is supposed to be, Ian and some of the fellows come to a cliff and they attempt to jump over the cliff one at a time with a rope. And then one of the is too afraid to jump. So he ties the rope around his waist, does a running step, jumps, and... Does a huge jump, and they find their way to the Dalek City. So, um, well, okay, okay, okay. You want to know how they got out of there, don't you? Well, the Thaw committed suicide. He took out his knife and cut the rope and committed suicide just for them to be able to make their way to the Dalek City. And after a whole bunch of being captured and being released and escaping and being captured again and capturing the ducks and a whole bunch of other mad stuff, then they finally get freed and drain the powers out of the ducks. With the ducks last words being, stop our power from wasting or it will be end of the Daleks. Which the doctor simply replied, even if I wanted to, I don't know how. Leaving the Daleks in mid-screen before they finally run out of pa power and are simply frozen. Everyone then walks away to continue their lives, but one thaw stays with, with Susan in the Dalek City for a while, wondering if there could have been another way to sort out that fight. With now the fluid link full of mercury and everything's fine, the crew then go off into the terrace to escape leaving the Thals as wonderful lives and not to worry about the Daleks at all. The Thals were a bit shocked to see the TARDIS vanish, but hey, what else could they do, huh? So, everyone seems to be chilling out in the TARDIS when all of a sudden... <laughs> every episode except for episode 6 and 5 because 6 the story could have gone well even if episode 6 wasn't even there because it was just all about them continuing to attempt to get to the Dalek City episode 5 could have also gone well without it even though the first half of episode 5 was kind of important but the rest of it just could have gone well um yeah, so, surprisingly, even though all the negative stuff that I just said about it, I would recommend it, because, like, that's just my opinion. I actually think that you guys, all those uh, Doctor Who fans who want to see the early 60s and Dalek episode fans should watch it if they haven't seen it yet. Now, if you watched my first episode review, you would notice I told you that a few things changed in the room during my review. Something did change in this review too. Try to figure out what it is. And I'll see you next time for review story number three.
the edge of destruction.